at, at first thought, uh, how I would use this in the field would be uh, it's kind of the epitome of hands-free technology. This would give me the ability to uh, answer the phone or send a text message while my hands were occupied or, or too dirty to answer a touchscreen phone. Uh, I would be able to, you know, maybe load a planner with seed while while talking on the phone or, or trying to look up a phone number or get directions for somewhere if I could just do it verbally and then also see what was in front of me. Uh, wearable technology I think could also provide me the ability to maybe, you know, on the mechanics side, uh, when if we're tearing apart uh, a pretty detailed piece of equipment, I could just have these things on and it would record uh, how I disassembled an item so that then come reassembly after the parts were in a couple weeks later uh, I might have forgotten how that went together exactly and I could just bring that photo up uh, that video what have you and uh, have a step-by-step -step instruction of how it goes back together because it was myself that disassembled it uh, that's a rather simple example but sometimes I wish we had things like that uh, also uh, instruction for employees uh, or, or family who are doing a task that I've done before, but maybe they're, they've been asked to do that and, and aren't familiar with it. If I could record myself doing a specific task from time to time that I know might be done by them, I could have them go into the archive and pull that up and they would have a, a shown example as there's people who do good by uh, discussion and there's people who do good by uh, being shown. And so this would be that instructional component that would be uh, you know a visual uh, by showing well it's it's easy to use and I wear glasses to read so and I can I can read the the screen is you know and I'm kind of looking up there concentrating on it but as I got used to it I wouldn't I think I'd learn not to look at it. It's kind of like Steve said about when farmers first started using light bars, you know, they were staring at the light bars so, so long that they couldn't work. But, you know, <laughs> once you got used to it, you would be, you'd just continue working, but yet you could make a phone call, you could send a text, um, you could take a picture, totally everything's hand free. Yeah. If I didn't have already like an iPhone, the Siri's pretty good voice recognition. So I'm, I'm kind of already up to that, yeah. but boy, if I wasn't, this would have been a real eye opener because yeah. the voice recognition other than saying the word Higginsville, which is not a common word. <laughs> otherwise, it got everything else flawlessly. It got my son's name, which is not a common uh, name. And so the voice recognition looks like it's right there with everything we ex expected to be. Um, you know, the camera's clear. Um, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what some of the other guys think. Um, I'm trying to think. Now, wait a minute, is this a glorified smartphone? And that's all it is. Uh, something, something tells me that there's more to this than that. Well, as a farmer, I, I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this translates on a day-to-day -day on the farm. Uh, visually being able to uh, uh, say monitor pivots, uh, monitor uh, just even the growing of crops. Uh, to me thinking of ways to use it, even a, just a time lapse of, of how that crop is growing and, and what it looks like here you know from day to day. Uh, and, uh, but from precision ag standpoint I think the possibilities <laughs> you know let your mind run wild. Uh, the support side to me is going to be one of the biggest right out of the gate of uh, being able to literally for our customers if they have one of these that that we can see what they see and so that we immediately are there at the point of the problem rather than uh, you know driving two hours and so putting uh, our ourselves literally right in front of that customer through Google Glass that's you know you know you know, it, it's it's something money can't buy. Well, you know, from an agent, we re, we have to stay at arm's length on claims with the federal program, but there's an awful lot of coordination that we are allowed to do, 
And so if we can, when, when the producer calls us about the need to replant, uh, you know, it's the obligation of the insurance company and their adjuster to, to really make that determination, you know, does this field really need to be replanted? Are we going to pay him to, can he file a claim and get paid for a replant? And, uh, you know, we could be doing this in a minute's time versus hours because the adjusters always live an hour away from all of my clients, it seems like. <laughs> you know, you're never lucky, lucky enough to have somebody live right next door. So um, just allowing, well, heck, it just goes back to a, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. I mean, we could sit here and talk for a long time and not spit out a thousand words, and we can do a 10-second video and the, the whole message is conveyed. And, uh, you know, I, going back to my machinery, mechanic days. I can't imagine the times that I've been able to take something apart, but I'm not real sure how to describe the broken piece to the parts guy. And uh, so you just say, look Mark, right here is what I'm holding in my hand. This is what I need. Do you have it on hand or do I have to go to another dealer? And uh, you, you just don't have to stand. Well, and and try and describe, well, it's the part that goes behind the shiv that's, you know, 